Hello and welcome to the sixth episode in our new Catch Up Fun series from Cambridge webinar. I'm Fabio Galvanini and I'll be moderating today's session along with my colleagues, uh, Jenny Mutlu Collins and uh, um, Stuart Vini. During the webinar, you'll be able to hear and see our speaker, Jane Ritter, and to see her slides. You all need a microphone, so please feel free to use the chat box to interact with everyone during the webinar. If you'd like to share your comments with all attendees, make sure that you select the all panelists and attendees option in your chat window. We will be taking questions at the end of the webinar. And if you have any questions for Jane or about any of the content that we've shared, please write this in the Q&A tab, which you should be able to see in your control panel. And we will answer as many of these as we can after the presentation. The recording of today's webinar will be on our Catch Up Fun site by the end of the week and we'll email you a copy of the recording plus your attendance certificates also by the end of the week. So I'm very pleased to welcome Jane as this afternoon's presenter. Jane Ritter is an author of the Fun Skills Home Fun Booklets and other materials and resources for Cambridge University Press. She has been teaching adults and young learners for over 20 years in both Italy and Hong Kong, and she, she's an experienced Cambridge examiner and examiner trainer. She's also a university lecturer, teacher trainer, a CELTA and DELTA tutor, and she's involved in several teaching development and training programs. I expect some of you um, have, may have attended Jane's sessions before. Most, rec most recently, she presented uh, on the topic of self-evaluation with children, which you can watch again in our Catch Up Fun series. Uh, you can find the link in the chat box. So without further ado, um, just welcome uh, Jane and uh, over to you. Thank you, Fabio. Um, thank you, everyone. I can see we've got people um, from all over um, the world. Uh, welcome. Do continue to let us know where you are. And remember when, because we will, we will be actually using the chat in the webinar, when you click on the chat to write a message, there's a little triangle, click on it, and you can see all panelists and attendees. That way everyone can see your responses and see where you're writing from in the world. So today we will be looking at um, pronunciation and I'll give you ideas on how to integrate this in a fun way. Oh, in your teaching. Some of you um, might, may already know me, but just in case you don't, um, I thought we'd play a little game, a rhyming game. Hello, Greece. Hello, Turkey. Hello, Colombia. What time is it there, Diana? Okay. My name is Rhymes with Rain, Jane. Okay. And here are some words that rhyme with my favorite things. The first one, my favorite food rhymes with snake. What do you think it is? Very good, Maria, fast. <laughs> Julia, yes, good. It is, it's cake. And my favorite animal rhymes with dog. No, it doesn't, it is a dog. <laughs> I just told you, it rhymes with log though, yes. Okay, and my favorite form of transport rhymes with star. Very good, everyone, good. Before we go on to look at the five fun activities, although there are probably a few more, um, I just want us to think a little bit about our beliefs when it comes to teaching pronunciation with young learners, particularly primary learners. I'm going to put some statements on, on the PowerPoint on the screen. And I want you just to think, how much do you agree or disagree? So a number from one to five, one being strongly disagree, two disagree, three, you're in the middle sitting on the fence, four strongly agree, Four, agree, and five, strongly agree. So I'll put this first statement up. Hello, Indonesia. Okay. 
The only important thing is that I can understand my students. You've got a one, a four, two, five, two. Okay, so there's a bit of a divide here. But mainly disagreeing quite strongly, in fact. Yeah, I mean, it's something to think about because, yeah, <clears throat> it's something to think about because we become so used to our learners' pronunciation um, that we no, no longer notice um, pronunciation errors. And that can happen when you're working in one country uh, for a long time. So it's important for us as teachers to ask ourselves, could someone from any country in the world understand my students? So we need to move out of that familiarity factor and, and make sure that our learners are intelligible. Another belief. One, two, three, four, five. We've got very mixed views here, but a lot of ones, a lot of people in the middle. Some people agree. One. Welcome, Erica. Okay. Yeah, I think um, it's important to establish realistic expectations, realistic pronunciation objectives. Um, these skills are developed over quite a long period of time. And the aim of pronunciation improvement is to achieve, is not probably not to achieve a perfect imitation of a native accent, but it is to be intelligible, comfortably intelligible. Okay. Even really good teachers of, of English at very high levels still have a certain amount of, of their own first language in their pronunciation, but that is part of their personality. It's part of who they are. So another statement. Okay, we've got quite a lot of fives here. Yes, <laughs> four, five, four, five, okay. Um, it is widely accepted that, that the younger we start, the easier it is to develop good pronunciation habits, most definitely. Younger learners have less inhibitions, um, they don't mind trying, and they're actually quite good at imitating us. They're less self-conscious and as we move up to the teenagers, they become a little bit more self-conscious. So the early start is definitely a good step, but it needs to be um, consistent and used. Okay. Obviously, they need exposure to good models to ensure that this continues. One more. It's a very nice comment, at least, yes, less active filter. And good. Okay, last one. Good pronunciation is just a matter of pronouncing individual sounds correctly. One, one, three. One, three. Okay. Yeah, I mean, good. Good, the pronunciation of individual sounds is obviously the most clearly and easily defined aspect of pronunciation. However, this does not mean that the other aspects need to be neglected. Um, when we're talking about primary learners and we're talking about obviously first and second years, we, we're going to have to work with those sounds because we're working at a word level. But as we move up the levels, other factors, word stress, sentence stress, intonation, become factors. 
Good. Okay, so what we're going to focus on first are sounds. And English is quite a tricky language. We have 44 sounds represented by 26 letters. And obviously how you approach teaching those sounds will depend on your, your teaching context and whether your learners are really learning to read or write in their first language. Local context determine how this is done. In bilingual schools, for example, phonics programs are, are quite common and they're used to teach sounds and help learners to read. Um, for second language learners, so if you're teaching English as a second language, we can take some of these ideas and introduce phonics gently, okay, focusing on sounds. One activity that is that I use and it's quite popular with my students are sound meatballs. Okay. I begin the lesson by telling the students that it's lunchtime and that the spaghetti with meatballs is ready. Um, you could put it on your desk. Okay, you can put your meatballs on your desk. An ideal scenario would be to have your learners on the floor and everyone has their own paper plate, fork, napkin, you know, meatballs can get quite, can get quite messy. Okay, um, we serve up the spaghetti. Um, unfortunately, there are only a few meatballs, so you can keep a meatball if you can make a word with the letter on your meatball. So, for example, we have the G meatball. Okay. Can you think of a word that begins with G or G? Write it in the chat. Girl, good. Very fast, good all. Goat. Garage. Garden, girl, good. Grape. Great. Get. Grape. Goal. Game. Guava. Excellent. I love guava. Gold. Garlic. <laughs> Simone, are you from Italy? Ghost. Excellent. Ghost is a very interesting one, isn't it? Because it's actually a GH sound. Garden. Yes. Okay. With this activity, you can obviously vary the meatballs. I initially start with, with consonants, but then you could develop it for, for other sounds. You just adapt the meatballs to the, um, to the activity or to the focus. Of, of your lesson. Okay. Um, by the way, this is wool, it's not pasta. Um, and so you can reuse it. Okay. And or if you don't have any wool, uh, you could just use dry pasta. You're not having spaghetti with meatballs, but maybe having um, fusilli with meatballs instead. Another activity to get students focusing on the sounds within the words, so how the words are extended, is this tea party activity. Um, I have my tea set ready. Okay, whoops. Bumped my mouse. Okay. I have my tea set ready, and I tell all the students that a robot is coming for tea. I actually have quite a few tea sets, so I prepare a few trays. Um, I've got some biscuits. Um, I've got a cake, which is actually a sushi sock. Um, I've got my cups and saucers, um, milk, sugar, and tea. Okay, the rule is um, that the robot only understands if you speak like a robot. You could create cue cards, or as I, I just prefer to use realia with, with my learners. So shall we try and have a robot conversation? Can I have a cup of tea?
Yes. Sorry. Yes. Milk. No, some sugar, please. Here you are. Here you are. <laughs> Take some time to practice. <laughs> what other things could we say at the tea party? What about this little one? Would you like some orange juice? Think of some other prompts. Nice, Vanessa. Yes. Now try saying it in a robot voice. Lovely, Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely, lovely. Okay, I would recommend you practice your lovely control. Thank you. Okay, good. Let me just move this out of the way. Okay, as we move up levels, or up the levels, dictation is a really useful tool and it's also really easy to prepare. Um, as you are teachers, I'm going to give you quite a difficult dictation, okay? not to use with your students, but just to remind you um, that we can use dictation. Are you ready? Have you got a pen and a piece of paper? Good. One one was a racehorse. Two two was one two. One 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 run race and two two one one two. I'll say that again. One one was a racehorse. Two two was one two. One 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 race and two two one one two. Have you written it? Put it in the chat. <laughs> it's really, it's not, but it does take a lot of processing, doesn't it? Is it one, the number? Is it one as in the past of one? Good, Karina's got it. One, one was a racehorse. Good. Is it two or two? Very good, good, <laughs> good. Okay, so using dictation, we're encouraging our learners to think about sounds, homophones. Jesus is a star, you've got it, yes. Good. Okay. Okay, but remember, it doesn't have to be that difficult. And we've got really nice activities in our course books to discriminate sounds. Here's a very, very simple activity from Kids Box. Um, it's focusing on the T and the D sounds. And then we have a nice phrase that we can chant with our students. So we've got T for train and D for doll. Ten dolls on a train, ten dolls on a train, ten dolls on a train. <laughs> Kids will be smarter than a teacher. It's a nice comment. Fantastic. Great. Okay. What sounds do your learners have difficulty with? Can you write them in the chat? The. 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 The D and the. Yes, the ED final sound. Good. Yeah. 
So you can adapt the lesson, these activities, according to the, the areas that you really want to focus on with your learners. Next idea. Thank you everyone for your, for sharing. Thank you. Okay, rhyme okay. is an important part of language learning. It helps with pronunciation um, and it inevitably helps us to boost creativity. With the rhyming, we had rhyming, we had sound meatballs. As we move up the levels, we could also play rhyming meatballs. So just exchanging the letters for rhyming words. Can you see any rhyming words on my meatballs here? Good. Okay. All right. And the idea would be to play this. Um, you can you get the meatball and then you can sit with someone who has a matching sound to have your lunch. Okay. Another activity could be rhyming consequences. Choose a word or a sound that you want to focus on and ask your learners to think about rhyming words. So what is my word here? What is it? It's a pen, very good. Okay, can you think of words that rhyme with pen? Men, ten, hen. Men, ben. Ten, hen. Ben, den. Ben. Good. When? Can? No. Can. <laughs> When, okay, good. So we've got quite a lot of words that rhyme. We can either brainstorm these with our learners to begin with, and then we can go on to play rhyming consequences. I give my students a folded up and then opened up piece of paper, okay? And I usually fold it for them, depending on their age, you may want to or not. And I also chop them in half to save paper and if possible, reuse photocopyable paper. Um, the first person, students are working in pairs. The first person writes a word on the first line and then folds it over and passes it to their partner, okay? They then write another word that rhymes with pen and folds it over. Goes back to the first person, they write a different word and pass it over to their partner. And they write another word and fold it back over so they can't see it. By the end of the activity, they have a nice long list of rhyming words and they can practice saying them and focusing on the sounds. Okay, if you want to, if, if you've got a less confident class, I would recommend that you brainstorm first, um, or you could do it as a class activity on, on the board. Um, if you want to up the level and you've got a stronger group of students, you may want to give them a time limit. Yeah. Okay. Spells are another way to include rhyme. Listen to this spell. Can you hear the rhyme? Hubble, bubble, toil and trouble. Hubble, bubble, toil and trouble. Good, Julia. Yes, Hubble, bubble and trouble. <laughs> Good. So if this were a normal classroom situation, I would ask my students to come up and underline the rhyming words. Which word would you underline in this spell?
three and three. Great. And this one. Ho and go. Good. Okay, so to get a feel for it, underlining, identifying the rhyming words, and then ask students to write their own. How would you complete this magic spell? Big and small, short and tall, nice. Big and small, ball. Big and small, turn into a ball, excellent. Big and tall for me, for me and all. Big and small, meatball. <laughs> yes. Love you all. <laughs> That's a nice magic spell. Is that the love spell? Short and tall in the ball. Okay, what about this one? Happy or sad? Good or bad, make me mad. Well, that's that's not a good spell. <laughs> Don't be mad. Yes, that's never be mad. Nice or bad are not bad. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Happy or sad, go to bed. Happy or sad, tall or short. Yeah. Great lad. Lovely. Okay. <laughs> Lovely, lovely. And one more. Clouds of rain. Listen to Jane. Go on a train. I'll go to Spain. <laughs> Clouds of rain makes you day. <laughs> Good. Oh, I think there's always something to gain. Sounds and pains. Dancing on a train. Lovely. Okay, good. So you can see it's a chance to think about words that rhyme, but also to be a little bit creative at the same time. This is obviously not for your students. This is just a curious note. Um, if I don't know if anyone is on Twitter, um, but there's a guy called Obvious Plant who does really silly things like leaves free hugs coupons in supermarkets for the cash registers and things, registers, the registers and things like that. But he has this spell, yeah, which I love. Just take a second to read it and then we'll move on. Okay, if you're a dog person like me. Okay, linking. When we say a sentence in English, we join or link words to each other. And because of this, linking the words in a sentence, the words do not always sound the same as when we say them individually. Okay? And linking is a really important thing for us to focus on in English. And it's important to give our students practice in both controlled and freer activities. Um, thinking about drilling sentences, drilling is quite a controlled activity. Now, normally we would be in a big seminar room and we'd all be talking, we would, we would all be together and we could drill this activity um, together. But unfortunately we're online, um, but luckily I've got my good friend here I'm sure you know her. Anne, are you there? I am. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so thinking about drilling sentences, I'm, Anne's going to help me demonstrate to you a good way to drill. If we drill this sentence, I went to Rome, some things get lost, linking gets lost. But if we were to drill, if we were to drill backwards, and this technique is known as back chaining, it is gener generally more effective. So listen to Anne. Anne, repeat after me. Rome. Rome. To Rome. To Rome. Went to Rome. Went to Rome. I went to Rome. I went to Rome. 
Very good. Do you want to do it again? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Rome. Rome. To Rome. To Rome. Went to Rome. Went to Rome. I went to Rome. I went to Rome. So if you think, if you look at the way the words link, we have to Rome. What happens? We lose a sound. What is it? Yeah, it just becomes to Rome. Okay. When to Rome? What happens here? It becomes went to Rome. Just one T sound. Very good, Julia. I went to Rome. Okay. It all joins together. And by drilling it backwards, we can point this out to our students. Let's do one more. You with me, Anne? I'm Tired. With you. <laughs> <laughs> Tired. <laughs> tired. Very tired. Very tired. Was very tired. Was very tired. I was very tired. I was very tired. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay. So thinking about this sentence, tired. Very tired. <coughs> was very tired. I was very tired. What happens to was? How do you pronounce it when you say it naturally? Yeah, it becomes the schwa. Good, Julia. Yeah, it becomes was. I was very tired. Good. I was very tired. Good. And it's important to point this out to students that it's the way we speak. Okay, good. You can also do it with simple classroom language. So things like stand up, become stand up, sit down. Okay, um, another great activity um, that I use quite a lot is going by plane. Okay, something that we probably haven't done for a while, would all like to do. I want you to imagine you're in my classroom and we're going to do the actions together. I can see you behind that camera. I can see you doing it with me. All right. First, I would ask, first I would ask um, my students just to listen. And then I would ask them to listen and do with me. So imagine we're at the airport. Yep. Say goodbye to your friends. Pick up your bag. Put it on the x-ray machine. Pick up your bag again. Show your boarding pass. Get on the plane. Put your bag in the overhead locker. Sit down, put the seatbelt on, lean back, smile. In three hours time, you'll be, where are you going? Greece, London, <laughs> Bali, Turkey, great. Lisbon, Morocco, Halifax, Paris, France. Okay, you'll be in Scotland, another planet. <laughs> I don't know that planes are getting there just yet. All right. Okay, again, we would repeat the activity. This time joining in Disneyland in Florida. Okay, this time I want you to join in with me. I want you to do and say, say goodbye to your friends. Put your bag in the x-ray machine. Pick up your bag. Show your boarding pass, get on the plane, put your bag in the overhead locker. Do you remember that movement? <laughs> Pushing it close. Sit down, put the seatbelt on, lean back, smile. In three hours time, you'll be home. 
Okay, there are lots of things that we can do with this activity, but doing and understanding and, and learning chunks of language are really helpful for learners. Okay. Afterwards, we can break it down. We can either have the, the story on cards and students work in pairs and put the story together, or we could actually get them to focus on, on the phrases and look at the sound boundaries, the sentence boundaries, apologies. Yep. Um, and that's also very useful for learners looking at a text. So they read and together they draw lines where the sentence end. Okay, this is an, a, quite an old one from Do and Understand, one of Puchter's activities. Yeah. Okay, again, for, for linking, dictation is also useful. And as I said before, very, very easy to, to do. Can you write this sentence? I've got two dogs. I've got two dogs. Okay, good. So here, focusing on contractions and also focusing on whether it's two, two or two. Another one. She's tall and kind. She's tall and kind. Good. Great. So again, contractions, but also tall and kind. It just and becomes an n in a certain sense. One more. They're happy today. They're happy today. Good. So thinking about if it's there, there, or there. Good. Songs and chants are obviously great for practicing rhyme, rhythm, linking, chunks of language. Um, they're great for a lot of things and they're also fun to do. Here we've got a song from Fun Skills. Before we listen to it, I just want you, we're going to listen and whoops, and we're going to tick the words. But before we do that, just looking at the words on the screen, what do you think the song is about? Visiting the zoo. Two, two, some of you might. Okay, so let's listen to the song. And while we're listening, I want you to tick or write in the chat the words that you hear. Okay. Let's go. the tree. A tiger sleeping under the tree. Shh. Look, a giraffe. Can you see? It's eating leaves off the tree. A giraffe eating leaves off the tree. Over me! A big grey elephant throwing water over me!
experience. So, yes, the words that you that we heard in the song that are on the screen, we had you, tree, be, to, see, great. Okay, good. And as a follow-up activity, um, you can ask your learners or your students to sort these into groups according to the sounds. So we've got zoo. <clears throat> what words would go in the zoo group? Shoe, blue, you, two. Great. And um, there's another group of rhyming words. What are they? Be, me, tree, good. And then we've got one more on its own. We've got four. Well done, everybody. Good. Great work. Okay. Repetition in the form of chants and stories obviously help learners to listen and notice sounds and stress, and they can also be a lot of fun. This chant focuses on the W sound and incorporates question words and actions can, can be used with it to incorporate or to internalize the sounds and the vocabulary. So for example, we walk, we watch, we wave. What? We wave, we walk, we watch. We watch, we wave, we walk. Why? We're in the park. Shall we do it again? Do it with me though. We walk, we watch, we wave. What? We wave, we walk, we watch. Where? We watch, we wave, we walk. Why? We're in the park. Okay, you could also do a follow up chant, depending on, on what you're studying with your students um, as an extension activity. For example, if we were to substitute the w sound with the s sound, um, we could make it, we sit, we stand, we study, what? We study, we sit, we stand, where? We stand, we study, we sit, why? We're at school. Okay. okay. That's um, that songs and chants for me. So let's move on to the next one. With primary learners, um, we can also begin to introduce intonation. By this, I don't mean highlighting um, the uses of rise and falling intonation, um, but maybe focusing a bit on how intonation can convey meaning, okay? It changes meaning. And even at low levels, um, we, we need to include activities that help learners to interpret these changes in meaning. So for example, if we, if we just look at the word yes, yeah? if we look at the word yes, We've got um, a lot of different ways of saying yes. Say it to yourself as if you were surprised. Yes. Okay. Angry. Yes. Yes. Happy. Um, sad. Yes. Or even bored. Yes. Okay. What about okay? Can we do the same thing? Can we say okay as a surprise? Can we have an angry okay? Okay. Um, can we have a happy okay? Okay. Yeah. Can we have a bored okay? Okay. So we can introduce this in our classes with very short dialogues and through role plays um, we can also consider how intonation changes meaning. So if we look at Oops, I've opened up the chat rather than... Okay, if we look at this short dialogue, imagine it's a mother and a child. The child comes home. Hi. Hi. 
Sorry, I've got it around the wrong way. Hi. Hi. Are you okay? Not really. Please don't be angry. What did you do? Please promise not to be angry. Okay. okay. Imagine this dialogue if it were the other way round. Okay, so between a mother and a child, like me when I pulled my son's PlayStation out of the wall and blew the memory. Hi. Hi. Are you okay? Not really. Please don't be angry. What did you do? Please promise not to be angry. Okay. It could change between, if it were between a doting grandma, their, their grandchild can do no wrong, okay, um, and their grandchild. The intonation would be different between two sisters or maybe a child and a teacher or even two friends. Um, but we can play around with very short dialogues and see how intonation affects that. So, to finish, remember um, in pronunciation in general is, it should be included in our lessons in very short, simple activities. Um, and that should enable our learners to build good foundations. So try a little bit at a time and remember a little bit each day goes a long way. Thank you. Fabio? Yeah. Hi. <laughs> yeah, hi. Yeah, thank you, Jenny. And uh, thank you, Jane. And uh, yeah, I'm just uh, uh, about to share my own slide. And meanwhile, um, I'll, um, I'll just give you, uh, I've seen there, there are a couple of, uh, of questions can, about yeah. uh, where, where we can find this wonderful uh, material uh, that um, Jane just shared. So, yep, this is what, uh, is, uh, what I was about to, to tell you. And uh, meanwhile, you, if you have any questions for Jane, please type them in the Q&A box so that we can uh, then spend a few minutes answering uh, your questions with Jane will. And so um, many or most of the resources that um, Jane showed you are actually from uh, our new series, Fun Skills. Uh, this, is, this is a six level series uh, with uh, characters designed by children from all around the world. And so um, some of the videos that you've seen is, um, show these, these characters and this is a very, uh, creative side to the fun skills series for sure. Uh, it's a skills based course uh, and um, topic and lessons also focus on creative thinking, collaboration and communication. And, uh, and there are um, the video animations of which uh, were shown today uh, at the beginning of, uh, of each unit and also throughout the unit with stories, songs uh, uh, and, um, um, yeah, and, and much more. Um, Alongside uh, with, uh, with, the, with the fun skills, uh, you can uh, also uh, purchase the uh, mini trainer. There are uh, short uh, collections of uh, uh, papers, but with full guidance and, and tips on uh, how to best uh, prepare for uh, starters, movers and flyers uh, experience. And, uh, and they also um, very nicely sort of uh, embellished with uh, um, some uh, video animations uh, so the characters come to life through QR codes and you can actually get live explanations on uh, tricks uh, and, and tips uh, for exam success. And just uh, another place to look at is the website wordoffun.cambridge.org. Uh, Word of Fun, you'll find here a lot of downloadable resources and these include um, downloadable worksheets that uh, will introduce to you and to your students uh, the amazing characters from the Fun Skills series. There is much more on there, so I I'm, I'm just uh, advise you to go and check. You can download uh, classroom posters uh, as well as flashcards. So really a word of resources for, uh, for you teachers uh, and for your young learners. And then um, just on the 13th of May, just wanted to remind you that uh, at nine o'clock in the morning, uh, Nick Mayfield will present uh, 
find fun ideas to make vocabulary jump out on the page to your to young learners uh, again on 13th at 10 o'clock so just one hour later straight after the first one and Robinson and Jane later again will uh, uh, present five fun ways to get young learners to respond so really look forward to that that will be at 10 o'clock in the morning and then uh, it will be uh, repeated uh, at four uh, o'clock uh, in the afternoon UK time of course and so having said this um, it's also important uh, for me to remind you that uh, all of the webinars from this series are actually available for you to go back and watch again or if you've missed a little part you can go uh, and catch up on that part so uh, it's cambridge.org slash slash catch up fun you'll find all of the recordings of this webinar and of previous webinars as well so uh, i think it's uh, now time for questions for you jane um, um i was just looking uh, uh we we got uh, yeah the first couple of questions are about uh, yeah the resources i think uh, right. hopefully Hopefully the explanation uh, just given uh, helped uh, to, to redirect those, those questions. And then there's one from Adriana. She asks how to improve children's concentrations in the concentration in the classroom, mm -hmm. uh, taking into account that children have very short attention span. Um, as, I, as I said, to, to use the younger they are, obviously the concentration spans are much shorter. And so you a lot of very short and simple activities so that they are they constantly have something to do so it could be something with um something very simple like focusing on some letters and chanting a sentence and then moving on to learning some other vocabulary i certainly wouldn't ask you to do a full lesson on pronunciation i would recommend a tiny little bit in each lesson Right, sure. There's, a, I think, another uh, question from uh, Rotua, and she asks, is there any simple tongue twister for young learners? There are Thanks, plenty Jane. plenty of simple tongue twisters from young learners. And um, you can, I mean, the, the internet is full of tongue twisters. I'm sure you can find quite a lot. Um, but I generally like to make up my own according to the, the, the language or the sounds that I want to focus on. Um, and you can actually encourage your own young learners to, to, to write their own when they get familiar with the sounds. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, uh, the, I don't see any, well, uh, there's, there's one just uh, popping up from, from Jennifer. Mm -hmm. She asks, any tips for teachers to be? Teachers to be. Um, make sure you've got a good book to work with. Um, which will have a good teacher's book to guide you. Um, come to all of our webinars. We, we do them quite regularly and, um, and follow well, the world of fun. Um, but also don't be afraid to try with pronunciation. A lot of people shy away from it because they think, well, I don't know. Um, I don't know very much about it. They don't feel very confident with it, but if you experiment just a little bit each lesson, um, it does become quite good fun. Or at least Great. I enjoy my meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jane. And an anonymous attendee asks, uh, how to give instructions to six-year-old children if they are not familiar with the language yet? Um, I, yeah, I demonstrate. I don't give instructions. Very simple one words and, and, and demonstrating. So for example, with the meatballs um, or with the tea set, um, showing them what I want them to do rather than telling them because that won't work, certainly if they don't understand. All right, yeah. Thank you, Jane. Very clear. Thank you very much. And, uh, but there's a, a bit of a technical question here. So Erica is asking whether the webinar uh, took place today at nine will be repeated another time or day. It's been repeated now, uh, Erica, so it's, it's the same uh, webinar or a very similar list. The questions will be different. Um, and it's also available on the Catch Up Fun uh, website. Uh, so uh, I'm sure my colleagues will be um, reposting the direct link in the chat box. And there's Megna. Megna, uh, she says, Jane, do you use uh, home language translations for worksheets? Not sure um, what. I, I 
I think, do you mean um, translating the worksheets so that the parents can follow? I, I think, yeah, I think that probably Magna refers to, uh, yeah, the, the L1 mm -hmm. um, translations so that, yeah, whatever. No, I, I don't. Um, but I try and obviously for, for, for younger learners, I try and make homework as as practic practical and as easy to do as possible at home because I recognise that not all parents speak English. Yeah, yeah, and, and Megna is specifying here uh, that she means also for students as well, whether you use L1 to... Uh... No, but I mean, I think if you have a look through fun skills, for example, the rubrics are really, really simple and, and easy to follow. They're not, com they're not complicated. They're, and we also have the, there are lots of um, animations to guide learners through, um, through the book as well, which makes it easier. Sure, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, th there was another question about uh, whether previous webinars were also available to watch again, and of course they are on the um, Catch Up Fun uh, website. Uh, right, so uh, Ludmila is asking, uh, uh, <laughs> oh, she says it's the first first series of webinars. Will will there be a second one? Well, we hope so. It's actually not the first one because we we, we did the first one uh, uh, of this kind last year, uh, I think it was in April and May. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's our, it's a new name for the series. So it's the first one with this new catchy name, but yeah, it's the second one. And, and we hope that, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll do our best to, uh, you know, to, to come out with more uh, as soon as possible. However, for now, again, uh, there, there's plenty of, uh, I mean, all of the recordings again are available. So. Um, feel free if you've missed one to go back and, and watch them again. Uh, all right, I think we still have a, a minute or, or so to uh, answer another question from uh, Rod. Okay, Erica, okay, Erica was yeah. asking about the, the the webinar that was at nine. Um, it depends where you are. And oh, yeah. If you're in um, if you're in Europe for for us, it's at four. I think about four o'clock in the morning. Um, we can. Uh, it will be um, online in the catch-up series so you can watch it when yeah yeah you're, you're you're right it was the, the one at nine on the not the one at ten yeah yeah you're right um, um and uh, yeah the question from uh Rotua is do you have some kinds of advice on the way to teach intonation and pronunciation for young learners I... yeah definitely i mean the activities that we've looked at today as i said i wouldn't teach intonation as i would with adult learners um i think it's more about focusing on on how our intonation conveys meaning and making students aware of this. Um, there will be a blog after the webinar. So all the activities that we've looked at today will be there and we'll, I'll put in notes on how to, to access them. I hope that helps. All right. Um, well, thank you very much, Jane. And uh, I think we, we may actually close here that we don't seem to have uh, other questions uh, but please remember that uh, on the 13th of May so uh, in just a couple of days we will meet again and Jane will be with us again so we're very happy about that uh, and uh, and of course on the very same day that there will be the two repeat sessions so one at 10 and one at four and uh, the very same day in the morning at nine there will be um, yeah yeah another talk and as Jane pointed out that will uh, not be repeated, but we will be made available on uh, the Catch Up Fun um, website at campus.org slash, slash Catch Up Fun. Um, having said this, thank you very much, uh, Jane. It was a really inspiring session. And, um, and so it was lovely to, to have you with us. And thank you everyone for attending. Thank you to uh, my colleagues for helping us out in the chat box. Goodbye, everyone. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.